Hello, welcome to our talk. And I'm, I mean it, welcome to our talk. <laughs> so, um, we are uh, all the readers of the OpenStack user group. Um, so we are talking about uh, seven years of our experience uh, to run our user group in Korea. Run OpenStack community for like uh, three generations. Ah, so I'm Jae Seok An. I'm the, the first reader in, uh, in the user group. And yeah, my name is Nari Jang. Uh, I, I was a second uh, yeah, reader of OpenStack user group. Yeah. And hi, I'm Ian Choi, the current mm. yeah, OpenStack Korea user group leader. Nice to meet you. So the, there's a common factor among us that is OpenStack have changed and is changing our life in a very positive way. So we are so grateful for that. So we want to share what we had for last seven years. OK. So we'll talk about, well, first we'll in, introduce you about Korea user group. Uh, then I'll talk about those first era of our user group, like the rising era. And Second, she will talk about expansion. And lastly, so. <laughs> uh, he will talk about uh, diversity of our user group in third generation. And also then I talk about some of the information and like uh, tips about running OpenStack Days event. So Korea is one of the early countries uh, that uh, launched user group um, in the country. So I believe Japan was first one in Asia, and Korea was the second one. So we launched our user group in February 2011. Our first gathering was 2010, December, but the official launching event was February. And I was a very lucky guy who had a chance to create this user group in Korea, and like making lots of friends with other countries and the foundation members. And by the way, I only missed the three summits. So I attended most of summit uh, from 2010 until now. And currently, um, Ian is running our user group. Um, also, we have official homepage, openstack.or.kr, but mainly we are uh, communicating over the Facebook groups and uh, social media channels. And we have over 5,000 members now in Facebook. And uh, in Korea, we hold many different types of events, including OpenStack Day, uh, which is also an uh, important part in our presentation today. And also, we are doing lots of technical seminars and organize local study groups uh, in Korea. And this is our history. We made this history graph uh, of the OpenStack Korea user group as we prepare this session. And in this slide, I would like to retell that the Korea user group has been evolved as OpenStack was also evolved. Um, for me, this, the blue line from 2010 to 2013, I believe this eight leads um, I was doing leaders uh, in the user groups. Wow. And from 2013 to 16, I believe that's uh, six uh, leads. And she was uh, leader of our user group. And uh, from this year, the Ian is the leader. And personally, I really hope we can someday have a release name uh, from Korea. Um, <laughs> so, uh, finger crossed. <laughs> and we had total four times of uh, the OpenStack Foundation celebration party, and total three times of OpenStack Days event. Okay. Yeah. This is the organization chart to represent who are the volunteers, organizers, and also active coordinators, uh, coordinators in Korea user group. There are three main different parts. One is global, the second is technology, and the third is networking. 
global part is very important for globalization. It means that it's very important because many local uh, user groups member, member, members use English as a second language, not a first language. Those three members are so good at English, including him <laughs> and others. <laughs> not only speaking, but also writing. Mm -hmm. The second part is technology. They are very good at technological aspects. And one guy in the middle, yeah, Ohyung, answers many technical and detailed questions and uh, answers in our Facebook. Then the third part, networking. This networking does not mean open state network component neutron. <laughs> yeah, for example, he, yeah, from for new, drinks a lot every day. <laughs> yeah, and Gu knows lots of event people in Korea and John knows lots of industrial people. They focus on social networking aspects in Korea, and also they facilitate and promote many events through online. So, so me, first leader, first generation of uh, Korea user group, uh, I will explain more details about uh, what we did. Um, so, I mean, the first generation, it was the uh, initial phase. So our objective was uh, successfully bootstrapping our user group in Korea. Mm. So we create, actually launched our user group, and we had the official launching event. And if, I don't know if it's working. No. Uh, well, there is, uh, in OpenStack ORG blog, there is actual blog. Um, OpenStack community made a road after our launching event. It was so good to see, it still exists in, in the blog. And uh, we hold various tech seminars and uh, we making uh, friends in our country, uh, especially with existing open source software communities. And back then, we were close to the Ubuntu communities. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, we, we participated uh, in the event. So, as an like initial phase uh, in your country when you just make a user group, uh, seminars usually focusing on the introduction of OpenStack. Well, these days, most of people know OpenStack, but back then in 2011, uh, that was not the case. Uh, so um, I was lucky to have a called Rapid Reaction uh, Forces, so a uh, group of the small number of people who understand OpenStack at that time. So we voluntarily participated in lots of seminars, and also we uh, opened, we had meetups to introduce OpenStack in, uh, in many peoples. Um, uh, also, we had some support from the foundation um, to have a good introduction uh, slide deck about OpenStack. So with those two combinations, we are able to, uh, like, a, introduced OpenStack to many people in Korea. And so as we continue to hold those small OpenStack seminars and meetups per month, and more and more people became interested about OpenStack, and we were able to grow our communities uh, with that. And second, uh, what we did is we tried to make um, ourselves very visible uh, in Korean OpenStack, uh, uh, Korean open source software communities, and trying to find uh, our friends. AIs, oh, and so objective is like uh, find um, our uh, friends in existing open source communities. So we voluntarily participated other open source software meetups like uh, Ubuntu and Canonical uh, meetups to introduce OpenStack to them and uh, we participated in open source events, also introduced our communities, and also we participated in seminars. Um, so by doing that, um, not only we can, we, we are able to, uh, I mean, advertise we are here, I mean, OpenStack community is here in Korea, but also we, we got some support from other open source communities. So uh, we are new, so we don't have any like uh, the servers to run our OpenStack homepage, but the other open source software community was very kind to offer uh, those infrastructures 
and um, helped us a lot to bootstrap uh, our communities. And also, uh, we try to leverage a lot of social media and, uh, and, and this party uh, really helped us uh, to uh, bootstrap our communities in Korea. So especially OpenStack Celebration Party was a good opportunity for us since it happens all over the world and it's shared in social media. So it showed OpenStack uh, is really fun community with strong global uh, presence. And it helped us to bootstrap uh, uh, better. And this is photo of celebration party uh, taken in many countries around the world when OpenStack Foundation was launched. And um, yeah. yeah. So, and there's. Um, yeah, who is Ken Pepper? There's Ken Pepper. Well, it was a long time ago, but I have to uh, thank you uh, to Ken Pepper. Uh, he, he made very good uh, conceptual of OpenStack architecture diagram uh, in early days. And it was a very good uh, tool for us to um, let people know what OpenStack is. And he actually joined our uh, local meetup and to uh, talk about OpenStack that helped us a lot. So we spent, we did like a spend three years and then OpenStack Korea community becomes uh, very active and we are able to expand our community in Korea. And, and by the time uh, of 2013, I realized that uh, there are like a now more younger ones who had better energy than me. I'm a bit <laughs> old. <laughs> better energy? And I realized, it, it, I realized that uh, they will be the better people uh, who can run this very active uh, community now. So I, my role was bootstrapping, uh, but right now we have very active uh, community and we, I, 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 I thought it would be a good idea to give uh, this leadership to the new people so that they can more participate more actively and expand our community more. So I did peaceful regime change uh, in 2013. <laughs> and um, I just did it and she was the second one. And, and some of tips, um, we did nominate it and selected uh, our second leader, uh, but we did internally uh, among uh, active people of uh, active group of people, uh, but we we made sure we have to make sure that all the process and information uh, must always be public, like uh, public. Although we are selecting uh, internally, uh, we have to uh, let uh, people and committee member know knows the processes and all the information that was important. And uh, one more tip is when you hand over your leadership uh, to the next person. Uh, you, you don't never scare your next ones. So if you say, I will be gone uh, after <laughs> certain days, uh, they'll be very scared. So you have to be there. You have to promise to be there and support them uh, to transit this readership of uh, user groups. So second generation, uh, she got that. Yeah. Hello again. Yeah, my name is Nari Zhang. I was a second leader of OpenStack Korea user group. Yeah. In the second generation Korea uh, user group, we started to hold the Open Sec Day in Korea event. We have held the uh, uh, conference every February. Yeah, right. Uh, so many people became to present their Open Sec experience. The Open Sec user group members was uh, increasing more and more. By the history graph, yeah, we can know what are the three times OpenStack Day's event and three times OpenStack celebration parties. Yeah, after I became OpenStack Korea user group leader, I made 10 members operation group and I held the event with the operation groups members. But the pre, um, preparing first OpenStack Day event was uh, difficult to me 
because I didn't have any experience to hold those events. Yeah, but it was <laughs> yeah, fun yeah, exciting. Yeah, and we made the community culture that invite many people to our group and participating for sharing their experience at our event and seminars. Yeah, we heard a lot of seminars for three years. In the um, beginning of the seminar, our operation members presented to introduce OpenStack to general members. We sometimes invited other countries, OpenStack engineers, and we held the seminar with them. Yeah, so many general members participated in the seminar, and we made opportunity to provide presentation presentation, their OpenStack experience. Yeah, we heard three times the OpenStack Day event during three years. And after OpenStack Day event, many people gave their opinion to our operation group. Yeah, the one of the option, uh, opinion is that make a study group for studying OpenStack technology. So uh, I made a study group, and so I found a member who operate a study group together. And uh, I found the people who will uh, attend to study group. So yeah, we started to study OpenStack with uh, the group members. Um, at the time, I met some guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he is now OpenStack career user group leader. <laughs> nice to meet you again. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, so, and we made OpenStack celebration party with various way. Uh, some party was uh, with beer. Some party write messages for celebration. OpenStack, yeah, some party have a seminar and beer. Yeah. With some, stickers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some party had a discussion about their OpenStack experiences. Yeah. Uh, the paper, yeah, the picture, the paper, I love OpenStack, OpenStack Korea. Yeah. Uh, I made it by myself with my daughter before the day of the party. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> yeah, our first OpenStack Day event was in Sejong University. Yeah, our aim was to collect yeah, attendee 400 people. Do you know the result? Yeah, sure. The result was a success. It was coming more people than people who we thought. Um, so we had the second OpenStack Day event in the Rotte Hotel. The second event was also successful. Yeah, at the time, most two foundation members, Mark, Tom, Heidi, Lauren, Claire, Jonathan was participating in the uh, second event, and they gave a celebration greeting. Yeah. In the third event, it was uh, coming more people than the second event. After yeah, Ian, about the three generation plan, and then Jessup will talk about how to prepare the OpenStack Day event and etc. Yeah. Yeah. From now, I would like to tell uh, what is going on third generation in Korea user group. So one goal for me is to how to make smooth transition for future generations. Fortunately, I attended all the previous OpenStack days in Korea, first, second, and third. And also, I attended first uh, OpenStack days in Korea. But I'm not sure whether new guys uh, have attended previous OpenStack days or not. Oh, and also, uh, yeah, so 
One great advantage in Korea local group is that so many old timers are still active, like Jay and Nari. But I'm a little bit worried about some kind of undesirable changes in the you know, group members. Many, some, many members are very busy, and sometimes people move to find their new job with their some more attractive work roadmaps. Moreover, it is still not easy to more communicate with new buys and with old, old timers. Let's take an example of our uh, group organizers. Yeah, we have uh, more than 10, 10 group organizers, but we do not uh, met each other very often via offline. So last March, 10 organizers met and discussed for next OpenStack days in Korea. And some organizers have not met each other in offline for more than one year, unfortunately. Starting from this, I would like to more organize communications between old timers and new buys, but not limited to just organizers. For all user group members, old timers can advise a lot for new buys. So, and new buys okay. can be, become future organizer candidates and future real well, new leaders. And the second aim is to encourage upstream contribution. I think it would be possible for many downstream activities. For example, local meetups. Yeah. In my op honest opinion, meetups are not limited to just seminars. One famous guy can explain a lot, but uh, some a kind of collaborative study activities and membership activities would be also a good idea via offline meetups. Last of same training in February in Korea is one good example, I think. I, fortunately, I participated in Tokyo of STEAM training in, in 2015, but in Korea, unfortunately, there were few, few, few members who previously participated in such of STEAM training events. So I organized one local study group to learn what of STEAM is, of training is, and of STEAM training materials in detail and we have led a successful upstream training on last February with the study members because they came, became so nice mentors in such upstream training event. And I want to more emphasize by dividing into intra-relationship and inter-relationship. Korea user group is also community and I want to define what our own community culture is. In Korea, I usually meet many other local, group, uh, local user groups. For example, Ubuntu Korea Community, Azure Korea User Group, and so on. Also, we organize and hold several meetups together. After then, I have found that different local groups are also quite active, and, also, and some cultures might, can, uh, can be different. I want to define our, and emphasize what Korea User Group community culture is by comparing with other local groups. And to do this, we need to advertise our Korea local user group. So we have made Korea local group business cards with new official group, user group logo. Finally, I would like to tell that Korea user group also pursues four open in OpenStack. We want to make our user group as an open source user group, truly. Yeah. Jay will tell later some aspects on OpenStack days in Korea, OpenStack days in Korea materials. And the right figure shows a local event calendar homepage. We organize many events, still organize many events, and also I also want to introduce interesting events for Korea user group members. One idea, and one idea I'm pursuing is to make use of OpenStack infrastructure for local user group. For example, yeah, OpenStack infrastructure uh, official team support, docs.openstack.org, www.openstack.org, and so on. Although I'm still busy de uh, dealing with many things, I want to create korean esque openstack.org. And we are making new Korean official homepage, and we hope that our new homepage will be hosted in OpenStack infrastructure from Open upstream contributions on uh, OpenStack infra by uh, many Korean local group members. And yeah. So I uh, talk about more about uh, OpenStack days. 
So on 2014, we started small at University Event Hall and had a huge success. So from the next year, uh, 2015, we moved to the big conference center uh, at very good locations. So this is 15. Uh, we had like about 800 people gathered in here, and everyone loved this big, like uh, the what's the, uh, the big sign in here. So mm -hmm. we had a very good success in 2015 and 2016. That was like a first year. OpenStack Days became official OpenStack event, and we are able to get more than more number than 2015. And it's a 2017, we are having Open Tech Days on July this year, and we have uh, coordinated with other user groups in Asia uh, with strong uh, foundation support. And so during the, those um, uh, four years of Open Tech Days, we have made lots of materials and content uh, for the Open Tech Day preparation. And uh, I think we are willing to share these materials and contents with the uh, community so that we can have others to host OpenStack Days. So for example, this is the event banner we made, we used, and uh, we have like uh, the, the original contents of this file, so we wanna share with that. And also we have Boost Design. Uh, if you run exhibition on your OpenStack Days, you will need those Boost Design so we can share this content. And logos, local ads, uh, banners, and uh, pre or post document. So I think we put our effort to make these contents and materials, and I think it will be uh, beneficial for others in other country uh, if they can uh, use these materials. So uh, we are going to open and we are going to share all of these materials with communities. And now I will maybe talk about uh, some tips um, of OpenStack event. So if you are like a first timer uh, hosting OpenStack Day event, actually foundation provides very good and super great uh, support metrics on the following URL. If you go to this URL, um, uh, you can see lots of uh, information and materials uh, to prepare your OpenStack days. And uh, to prepare event, um, I recommend you uh, form a separate committee. Uh, so have a separate committee. Uh, why, it, why it requires? Running OpenStack Days, it requires a full dedication. It is a difficult task. So having committee and assigning people, uh, like each role in, in, in committee, People care more uh, when they have dedicated role. And also, with those separate committee from like a normal the open source community or user group uh, management, uh, you can include others uh, to promote more participation. So sponsors can be important part of committee. Well, usually for the, the user, user group management, uh, company or sponsors, not the actual the members of the user group, but for the OpenStack days, they can be uh, important part of the committee and partners. Or event agency, if uh, OpenStack days got bigger, you have to use the event agency, or media, or there's government. All of those stakeholders uh, can be member of committee so that you can promote more participation to them because you include them into your committee. So having committee is a good one. Also, the venue and date. I mean, venue is most important factors of preparing open stack days because it's number one cost factors, the venue. It's very expensive. So you need to be very conservative uh, deciding where uh, you want to uh, have uh, event, or you want to provide lunch, or you don't want to provide lunch, that also uh, decide how much money you need to run this event. And um, venue can be also important sponsorship item. So usually you get sponsorship money 
and you contract some venue, but venue itself can be like a sponsorship item. If some company can provide a venue, that will be super great. And you have to plan very early. Uh, some of venues, their availabilities, you have to reserve like a, a year before actual event. So you have to uh, plan very early. That's, uh, that will help you uh, to find a better venue. And uh, sometimes you have to research on when will be proper time for the sponsorship. So let's say, um, so you, you get sponsorship from the company. And each company have sort of financial blackout period. For example, uh, because of they, they are, they are, they are ending their financial uh, year in July, then means uh, in June, July, they don't have money to support your event. So uh, you have to do a little bit of research uh, on the important uh, sponsors um, when they have more money to sponsor your event. So that will be uh, some of the tips. And for the sponsorship, um, you have to secure the potential uh, sponsors' contact information. Uh, hosting call for sponsorship is good, but it usually does not work. So just posting call for sponsorship, you don't get much response uh, from your uh, sponsors. So you have to be prepared before you posting call for sponsorship. So what kind of things? Uh, you have to have your website so that a potential sponsor can look into your website. And you have to have a sponsored prospect, uh, prospectus document to give you, to give to the older companies. And you have to have all the contact information about potential sponsors. Um, uh, and you have to be ready to be call center. So sending email, uh, sometimes you get response, but sometimes you have to call uh, like the marketing people in that company uh, to uh, actually have conversation about sponsoring your event. So uh, you have to have contact information. And you have to do the very good calculation of total estimate of your event, because that decides uh, how, how many sponsors you need and uh, level of sponsorship. And that, so total estimate cost decide those things. So you have to have some uh, knowledge about total estimate. And you can always request help to the community. Sometimes foundations or other members in the community, senior members in the community, can find sponsors for you. So always just contact the foundations uh, to get support. And call for, call for speakers, you, you do always early. And you can post everywhere. Um, so do not limit yourself uh, in OpenStack mailing list. OpenStack can be many things, as you know. It can be cloud, network, storage, containers, big data, machine learning, Python, DevOps, automation, et cetera. So uh, if you find any relevant open source community, you can post there uh, for the call for speaker. Uh, that way, you can get more speakers. You can get more content. Um, and when you're looking for the speakers, there is always a problem between balancing sponsorship speakers and community talk. Usually, if you give the sponsors, uh, usually sponsors uh, want to have a talk in your event. Uh, so number of sponsors decides number of talk you have to give the sponsors. And that sometimes it, it narrow down a uh, number of the community talk. So you have to balance it out uh, carefully. So after event, um, you better post the videos on foundation channel uh, that increase your visibility of your event, and it helps to prepare next event. And you write blog also to increase your visibility, and uh, you write event report um, for the sponsors, for the committee members. And if you write like an event report, a summarize of your event, uh, result of your event, and give to the sponsors, and they like that. And then it will increase chance uh, for that company to sponsor your next year OpenStack event. And, and after event, you, you forget how difficult it was. No, forget everything, and just have really good memories. Uh, then you can uh, have more strength to prepare next event. 
Yeah. So having all this experience, thing, there is things make me think these days. So in Korea, I don't know about other countries. Community is getting more and more diverse and active because uh, right now we have OpenStack, but we have containers and lots of other cloud technologies. So community is getting more, uh, it's better, diverse and active, but uh, securing sponsorship is getting, getting a bit harder. So that makes me think about this, like uh, the problem with business friendly community. So the Korea, uh, no, OpenStack has been known as business friendly community. Uh, it's good because uh, now with that company involvement, uh, you can not only talk about like a pure software, but you can talk about how it can be deployed and how it can be used in real life. That's good. Also, uh, being business friendly means you can get more support from company. But always there is concern inside community that uh, if we interact with company too much, the open source community becomes just business, and that's not good. So there has to be balance between two. And that's always a difficult task as an open source community, especially OpenStack. So I'm thinking these days that what would be real fun in community? Um, so thinking about that. And we don't want to make someone burn out uh, from community work. The community should be driven by fun, not driven by the, the required jobs you have to do. So, so thinking about like a, what's the, why you are participating in community, because it's fun. But if you're doing like over three or four years, it became your job. So we want to avoid that. So I'm thinking about how we can back to the beginning, like a pure the open source uh, uh, software and funds and interesting stuff. So right now we have very strong foundation. OpenStack uh, user group is very active. It's very big. And we have very strong foundation of this uh, group. And uh, with leveraging all these foundations, we can um, pursue more, more things, like uh, let's just follow where our interest and fun goes. We are not a company doing OpenStack. We don't need to earn the money from OpenStack. So uh, we, can, we can do containers, we can do like machine running, uh, where interest is go. So just be open and more diverse. That will be better uh, for uh, in general, I think. So I think that's the end of our slide. Um, and I really thank you for everyone in here uh, for our talk, to, to hear our talk. And any question? Yes. yes. So part of the community, how you are able to influence um, adoption of OpenStack in Korea? Because you started in 2011, probably at that time, OpenStack might not be embraced. Mm -hmm. So how you help or deploy OpenStack in Korea? Hmm. So, well, the for sure we are, so we are, we are, we are giving a place where people get together and talk together. So sometimes it's very difficult for the people uh, to, to, to talk like a people in other company or people in the university, uh, even though they want to too. So, but the, but community, if they come to community, it's more flexible for them to talk about what they're doing, what their problem is. So the user group can give those places uh, for the people. And that helps people to understand OpenStack more, to share their problem and, and yeah. also. Moreover, I would like to tell that uh, you know, some a kind of some um, Korean culture. It means that actually Korea use OpenStack a lot, but the problem is some companies do not reveal their some secret yeah, OpenStack as a secret. For example, one big game company use OpenStack a lot, just uh, even for beta test game, beta test and production. But they do not tell to media that they oh, they are not using they are using OpenStack or not. But in when you come to uh, user group meetups, 
I meet many guys for, from their company, and they share some internal details. So it is very nice to more communicate in user groups. And also, uh, through the study group, you can help students or developers um, to get to know of OpenStack better. And then uh, they can contribute their, their like, uh, capability into like, uh, companies and it, that's so they can expand OpenStack. So that's one of our aspects. And having strong, very active user group uh, in the country, uh, that means there is more visibility of OpenStack. And uh, that helps company also to, to do the business in OpenStack area. So if it, it, it yeah. yeah. And any other questions? And thanks a lot for okay, thank coming you. this session. Thank, thank you very you. much.